Peter the Great's new Russian capital, St. Petersburg, was thought of as the Venice of the North. Today, elegant bridges cross quiet canals. Plazas are decorated with marble fountains and statues. But in the late 17th century, when Peter came to power as a teenager, the Russia that he inherited was both primitive and poor. It was on the periphery of Europe and also on the periphery of Asia. It had got stuck between the two worlds in the most unfortunate and unproductive manner. But Peter saw potential just to the west. His goal was to turn Russia into a country as wealthy, civilized and powerful as the great nation states of Europe. There was only one thing standing in his way. Russia had no access to the ocean. If you look at a map of that era, you understand he's only a few miles from the Baltic. He's only a few miles from the Black Sea. Just needs to bust it out and to open up uh, Russia's possibilities for marketing its goods and to accumulate a treasury and then to build and accumulate an army to protect itself. Peter had only two things to work with. His own iron will and the slave labor of thousands of peasants. So around 1695, he set about building ships and training sailors to man Russia's first navy. In some sense, Peter was the first totalitarian leader, really, who started thinking how to use masses uh, to bring his empire to the peak of influence and might. Peter literally built ships with his own two hands, working on the docks as a carpenter. His passion for hands-on experience permeated every aspect of his reign as Tsar. Louis XIV wouldn't have known a can which end of the, of the cannon the, the, the ball came out of. And here's Peter down there saying, get out of the way, I could fire that gun better than you. I, I can build that ship better than you. In 1709, Peter and his new navy finally secured the window to Europe that he had so desperately wanted. His troops defeated the Swedish army, and Russia took control of Estonia, Latvia, and part of Finland. Peter had already started building his new capital of St. Petersburg in the middle of this conquered land. It was both a capital city grand enough to impress all of Europe, and the ultimate statement of Peter's power. Peter was trying to make an announcement to all his enemies and to all his friends in the West that the opening to the Baltic and Russia's communication with the rest of Europe was not negotiable. I'm moving my capital there. You don't just win this province back. You destroy me. You take me down. And you better understand that when you come against me, you're coming against me big time. Peter knew that if Russia was going to be modern, it had to look modern. So he built new roads, canals, and schools, and turned the long-held traditions of his country upside down. Peter's sweeping social reforms affected every aspect of Russian life. Men were ordered to shave their traditional long beards. And when the aristocrats refused, Peter personally cut them off himself. He changed everything from personal hygiene to the clothes people wore on their backs. Not even the Russian Orthodox Church was safe from Peter's dictates. The decree was confiscate all the church bells in North Russia. I need artillery. Nothing ever said the more pragmatic character of Peter than that. It wasn't about whether there's a trinity or not. It wasn't about the divinity of Christ. It was about you've got my money and I need your resources. The message was clear. The Tsar was to be obeyed without hesitation. Peter ruled the country with personal strength. And like King Louis XIV had done before him, Peter ruthlessly crushed revolts, mounting dead bodies and severed heads on the exterior walls of the Kremlin. People who were watching him in those moments suspected that he was insane. His pleasure at the suffering of his enemies was too obvious and too deep. In 1725, his reign of violence finally ended. After years of terrorizing his people, 
Peter the Great died of an intestinal illness. He was 53.